Okay, let's talk about the strength of acids and what we know about acids that can help you say, is this a strong acid or is this a weak acid or is this a strong base or is this a, a weak base? So always remember there's a difference between concentration and strength of an acid, okay? So if it's a concentrated acid, there's a large quantity of dissolved acid or dissolved base. And if it's a dilute acid, there's a small quantity of the substance in there. So it's kind of like Oros here. Is the strong Oros or weak Oros? Concentrated Oros, weak Oros. And this has got nothing to do with um, the strength of the acid. It's just literally only the concentration. So they always try to trick you about this and you need to keep it very clear in your head. What is concentrated? What is dilute? What is strong? What is weak? So you can take a strong acid, make it into a dilute solution, and then it doesn't look like a strong acid because it's so dilute, but it's still a strong acid. It's ionized completely because that is what defines the strength of the acid, how much it ionizes. And so you can still end up with relatively few protons in your sip here. If you were to sip this acid and sip this acid, there's relatively few protons in the dilute one, but for the number of moles of acid you put in there, it all dissociated into protons. Don't drink the acid, okay. But if you think about it like Oros concentrated, weak, okay. But the fact is that if you put a weak acid in there, there's not going to be a lot of protons in there. Even though there's only acid in here, there's not going to be a lot of protons running around to say that this is a strong acid. So one of the ways that we can look at how strong is an acid is by using a Ka value, okay? And it's actually the equilibrium constant of acids and bases. They Ka and Kb values. So all acids, when they ionize with water, are considered equilibrium reactions. And the moment you've got an equilibrium reaction, you can make an equilibrium constant Kc. And remember, Kc is equal to the concentration of the products raised to the power in the equation over the concentration of the reactants. So we call Kc for an acid, Ka, Kc for a base, Kb, and water, which can be an acid or a base, gets called Kw, okay? So this is the equilibrium constant for an acid, the equilibrium constant for a base, and the equilibrium constant for water. And the size of this equilibrium constant based on the concentration of products over reactants can tell you how strong an acid is. And we will in fact use these three to calculate pH. This is actually how we're going to end up calculating pH. But for now, let's just have a look here. Okay, if you take an acid and you ionize it, so here's my proton, which shows you an acid, and it's linked to this little anion, and we add water, it will go reversibly to a proton or a hydronium ion, if you prefer to call it that, plus the anion. Okay, this is usually. Um, Endothermic, delta H is greater than zero when you dissociate an acid. But not to worry about that for now. So if you look at this reaction, he has my acid plus water ionized into protons and anions. You can calculate your equilibrium constant, okay? But we're going to call it Ka and not Kc because we are looking at an acid specifically. So Ka is going to be the concentration of the protons multiplied by the concentration of the anions, because these are the products, divided by the concentration of the unionized acid, which is like hydrogen chloride gas or something here. Why are we not putting water in? Water is a liquid and it's like a solid. We don't put it in the reaction. We put in aqueous solution, okay, but we don't put in pure liquid. So here the water is a pure liquid. We ignore it. Okay, so if you've got a strong acid like hydrochloric acid, equilibrium lies far to the right. Okay, and basically all you've got left are protons and anions in solution. There's basically nothing of this left. And then if you're dividing by nothing here, yes, not that we can divide by nothing, but if you're dividing by a very small number here, this will be very, very big. So the equilibrium constant Ka for acids that ionize completely strong acids, it's going to be a large value and it's going to be bigger than one. So it'll be like 10 to the two, 10 to the six, whatever. But if it's a weak acid, you don't get many protons and your Ka value becomes very small. I'm going to sneeze, excuse me, <coughs> sorry. And I'm not re-recording this, so we're just going to carry on with the sneeze. Okay, so 
your Ka value, your equilibrium constant for your acid, it's a measure of the strength of the acid. And because, look here, there's a delta H for this. Remember um, Le Chatelier? It is going to vary with temperature. So your acidity will vary with temperatures. So um, because most acid dissociation is endothermic, so it will dissociate more with increasing temperatures, according to Le Chatelier. Okay. So most chemistry textbooks are going to give you a Ka value at 25 degrees. 25 degrees is often assumed to be the laboratory temperature all over the world. So for instance here, I got a table off the internet to look at. If you look at these acids, hydrobromic acid, hydrochloric acid, sulfuric acid, oxalic acid, which is what we titrate with, sulfurous, hydrofluoric, and ethanoic acid. Okay, If you have a look here, the Ka value is 1 times 10 to the 9. This is a 1 and 9 naught. So this reaction basically lies completely to the right. This is a strong acid. It is dissociating completely because the product of protons in solution is huge. Hydrochloric acid, 1,3 times 10 to the 6. Remember, sulfuric acid is a polyprotic acid. So it's got two ionization reactions. The first two HSO4 minus and the second when HSO4 minus goes to SO4 2 minus. OK, remember, we talked about polyprotic acids already. So the first first proton coming out is 1 times 10 to the 3 and the second is a weaker reaction 1 times 10 to the 2. But basically this one, it's dissociating completely. This is like an anal nitpicky scientist thing. If you look at oxalic acid, on the other hand, this is also polyprotic acid, okay? It can lose two um, protons. If you have a look here, it's 10 to the minus 2, 10 to the minus 2. So these are a fraction. And if it's a fraction, okay, a decimal fraction, there's not a lot of protons in the product. Sulfurous acid is weaker. Hydrofluoric acid, interestingly enough, is a weak acid. And ethanoic acid is even weaker than that, 1,7 times 10 to the negative 5. So you can see here's the difference. If, if you've got 1.3 million and here you've got one millionth and this is the concentration of the hydronium ions, you can see why one is a strong acid and one is a weak acid based on the equilibrium constant value. And so now this is exactly what we did with the acids. You can do with the bases because it's also an equilibrium reaction. So you can take your Kb, concentration of products over concentration of reactants. So for a strong base like sodium hydroxide, uh, Kb is like 100 or 10 to the power of plus 2. For a weak base like ammonia, the Kb is 1,8 times 10 to the negative 5. Okay. So usually the Ford reaction for sodium hydroxide is so strong, we use the forward arrow instead of the reversible arrow. But you can see here, 100 plays 1 over 10,000. Then you can see there's very, very few um, hydroxide ions. When you put ammonia plus water, the concentration of hydroxide ions, which is equivalent to your Kb, is very, very low. So if you have a look here, and you've got an acid and ionizes in water. Remember, we have an acid plus a water gives you a proton and a conjugate base. Okay, so if we turn this one reaction here into an equilibrium constant Kc thing, and you put the concentration of the acid multiplied by the concentration of the conjugate base over the concentration of the acid, ignoring the water because it's a liquid. If you have a look at that and you say, Okay, what's my Kb for the base, for the reverse reaction? They're going to be inversely proportional to each other. So the Ka and the Kb are inversely proportional. If the Ka is big, the Kb is small. Okay, remember, a strong acid gives you a weak conjugate base. And this is where this comes from. Strong acid, weak conjugate base. So Ka is inversely proportional to Kb. And we're going to be looking at these Ka's and Kb's when we concentrate, or when we concentrate, when we calculate pH using the hydronium ion concentration, because pH is related to the hydronium ion concentration. So you need to remember this, that there will be a forward reaction Ka and a backward reaction Kb, and those two values are going to be inversely proportional to each other. And this is the end of how you can use an equilibrium constant to determine the strength of your acid.